one Christmas Eve. Why one? Why not a Christmas Eve? I think it happens more than one time, to be honest. <laughs> and, and, which is sad, right? When we get into the story, it'll make more sense. Yeah. Now, I guess a quick uh, housekeeping note. The main character's name, how did you say this name? I said R.C. Ah, crud. I've been saying Archie, and someone else read it as R.C. I'll leave a link to someone who will read the story to you yes. for free. That it just it reads Archie to me because I know someone with it this way that re- reads it as Archie. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I mean, potato, potato, right? Yeah. So we start out with R.C., Archie, whomever you want to call her as. <laughs> and uh, she can't leave because her missus, meaning the white woman that she's working for, is out shopping with her kids, right? And, and she wants to go get a tree for her son, Joe, Archie does. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for my through way to this story, and I'm kind of curious to hear what yours is, because the, the way I thought about this is Archie's like, she's really struggling to just give her kid the best Christmas she can. You know what I mean? Like, that's something that if you're a parent, I think most people can relate to, right? Like you really want your kid just to have this magical and memorable Christmas. And that's a struggle for her. I even go to far as say that even as an adult without children, that I can relate to that as well, because I think of my past Christmases and I was like, man, I don't remember my mom or my dad having a lot of presents to open. And when they did, it was the traditional socks, a sweater, you know, it was, house stuff it wasn't like diamond bracelets it wasn't cars it wasn't things like that i'm like they sacrifice so my sister and i had nice gifts so i had my super nintendo so you know i had the shoes that i wanted and she had the dolls that she wanted so i I think just as an adult reflecting back as a child you realize that your parents gave up a lot so that you could have that magic because it is something that we reminisce to as adults that we try to get back to we long for that time of our innocence as a child And I I think that that's uh, something that, you know, R.C. wants for her son. Well, and to your point, the haves and have nots, budget matters, right? Yeah. We're not living on these infinite resources. Uh, You know what made me think? Okay, so the the missus comes home and remember, she's like, oh, um, I only got five out of seven dollars. I hope you're okay with that, right? Right. Uh, You're asking for early, right? Like, it's no big deal, right? It it reminds me how R.C. is sitting here waiting for the missus to be done doing her shopping, right? And, and even while Arcee's working, right, and looking after their roast, you know, she doesn't have a roast. Well, back home, you have the landlady who's waiting on Arcee to get home. So you see this, like, interconnectedness we have of, like, influence and impact we have on each other. It made me think a little bit about, remember that? I can't remember the exact name of the movie, but I think it was called, like, 99 Platforms or 99 Floors, like, where you have, like, oh, yeah. the f- the food that came down and you could like eat as much as you want. And then after a certain period of time, it like, didn't it go down a level and it yeah. just keeps going down and down and down. Right. Yeah. Through the center of the building. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the point being, there's enough food there technically for everyone, but the greed and, and that, that the way that we would just take whatever we can for ourselves, the top get the most amount of resources. And as it goes down and down and down, there's less and less. Right. And, and don't you see that here? You know, there's the roast and, you know, the missus got whatever Christmas presents she wanted for her kids. Right. And I don't know her. I don't know her situation, but she knew R.C. was looking to get paid early. And she knew when she used that money on her kids. Right. And then when the money comes down to R.C., well, she doesn't have the full seven dollars anymore. She's only got the five dollars of her weekly pay. She'll have to get the two dollars later, hopefully. (laughs) Right. And, And the landlady's at the bottom like, come on, I'm not even getting paid at all. Right? I'm doing this for free to watch your kids so that way you can go out and work. And I got stuff I need to do myself. It's kind of like the, the, the idea is that we should be thinking more about how I think we impact and live in this community with others when it comes to those have and have nots, I think. Yes. And that was what was important to me that started to distinguish between the Mrs. and R.C., was that R.C. is concerned about the landlady watching her son. She does have empathy, like, "Ah, I need to get home. You know, I want to go shopping for my son. But also, like, I feel bad because that lady, she even says, like, that lady has stuff to do and probably wants to go shopping as well. And and she wants to get home to relieve her, where the missus has no care that R.C. is stuck there cooking her food, waiting. 
I mean, we don't see it from her perspective narrative, but I think we're kind of led to believe that the missus really doesn't care. And that is the one thing that kind of irked me. Uh, I, I think is intentional that you're supposed to feel some sympathy for RC and the landlady and not the missus. That's a really good point too, actually. Um, all right. So let's talk about when they do go out shopping, right? So they see the whites only theater, um, you know, she, she has to bring Joe with her and kind of like surreptitiously try to get the presence. You, you really get this feeling of her just trying to survive to that earlier point of like wanting to do the best that you can. And sometimes you got to work with what you got, but what was kind of really like, like a, a epiphany for me was when they got to the store and that's when they saw Christmas, if you will, like the tinsel and the Santa Claus and all the happy children looking around and all the different toys and stuff. There, there's this, this moment of joy that comes out of this oasis, this desert of, of lack to a sudden, a sudden opportunity for these, these, this kid, right? Where he sees, he sees everything that he could possibly get. And he's just happy, I think for, a, for a brief moment. I would bring it back also to what you said about community before, whether you're any religion or not. I know that Christmas and that specific time of year, that day can be related back to different religions throughout time. But as we move into modern times, I feel like Christmas is more of a community. And that's what we see here is when when Joe and RC are alone, they're on their island they're isolated from the joy of Christmas, from the joy of community, the joy of giving to others. And then they finally go out in the store. That's when they're surrounded. They're they're in, imbued with all of this happiness and love and kindness. And then we start to see things take a turn for worse for poor little Joe. Well, and that's where poor little Joe goes and kind of like sneaks away to, to go meet Santa, right? But it's in the whites only area. And he's ridiculed like the they break the shake the rattle at him or more or less and kind of mock him. And it, it hurts him. Right. This isn't this isn't a man dressed in a Santa costume. It's Santa. Right. Like this is. Oh, a yeah. Figure that is revered for him. And he's viewed as not even on the same level as other human beings. He's viewed as lesser than I could only imagine how heartbreaking that must be as a child. I even today. When you see the Santa ring the bell or you're walking through the mall and and we saw I was I was in New York City and we saw the, the Santa sitting there and all the kids lined up. It just made me smile. It's hard not to just be, I don't know, reminiscent of of that that joy that Santa Claus brings and then to be ridiculed, mocked by the one person that you, I mean, let's think, think about that. There are two things as a child that you look forward to, summer break and Christmas, and maybe I guess your birthday, but like those are the big three, right? Mm -hmm. And then to one of them be crushed in front of you, I mean, that, that's got to, that, that's, that's PTSD, that's therapy. <laughs> I mean, you're scarred for life at that point. Right. Well, it's like, you don't belong here at this holiday in, in, in the you know, white Santa village, basically in the movies and such. And now you see a lot more representation with like even black Santas. Right. And I think some people kind of are like, well, you know, what's going on here? Like, how do, how do I interpret this? Right. You got people that are totally okay with it. And people that are like, why are you doing this? Right. Like, you know, fourth century St. Nick was white. Like what, why would you try to make it black? And to, to me, it's never been a big deal. Right. It hasn't been a chord for me. But I was actually reading this article because I'm trying to understand it as we go through this project, right? Of reading from different voices, different backgrounds, people have different experiences than us, right? Right. And I read this really great article from BBC from Kenny Green, who's been playing basically a black Santa in the Washington, D.C. area. He said, everything that Santa represents has to be you. That's my honest belief. You can't have some grumpy old guy who doesn't love kids sitting there representing somebody who is joyful somebody who is loving. And, and he wasn't talking about this story. I'm just kind of doing my research, trying to think more, uh, try to open up my horizons, right? And that's kind of an interesting idea of the idea of the spirit of Christmas being you. Where do you see you in that? And to that exact point of Joe being denied that, of saying he doesn't belong here, he doesn't belong. Uh, and, and even honestly, like that moment where he like goes out in the crowd and all the white people are walking past him, it's almost like his... His racial presence, his consciousness is just getting washed away. 
Like it doesn't matter in the face of all these white people who are going out and doing their shopping first and giving the leftovers, the five out of seven to the RCs and stuff like that. It, uh, it really kind of makes you think about it. I can't remember which movie it is because I'm sure it's in many different Christmas movies. Is it the Santa Claus with Tim Allen where basically they say that the spirit of Christmas lives in all of us and it's the strongest in children because of their innocence. And that's a good point. I just, Christmas is love, and to take that away from a child, I think, is criminal. And the the I think it comes down to the end of the story too is is when his mother kind of saves the day, and I don't know, read the quote because it, it just it 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 brings it full circle and it it really warms your heart of thinking okay there is a monumental lesson to be learned here. Are you telling me to read the quote because I don't have it ready? But hang on, I can get it here. Huh? <laughs> that wasn't no Santa Claus. RC explained. If it was, he wouldn't have treated you like that. That's a theater for white folks. I told you once, and he's just an old white man. Oh, said little Joe. Yes, that 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 right there encapsulates, I think, for me, the lesson of this that it, like you said, it, it doesn't have to be the pigmentation of Santa Claus. It has to be the representation of of love, giving, caring, whatever adjectives you want to use, that's one of the true meanings of Christmas. Yeah, well, let us know if you guys find the you in Christmas for yourselves out there. If you did enjoy today's conversation but aren't sure what to add, leave us a little Santa emoji. It lets us know, or lets YouTube know, that you did enjoy today's conversation. I'll leave a playlist of other Langston Hughes talks below. What other Christmas stories do you think we should cover next? My name has been Una. Peace. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Peace.